In this video, I am taking you on a delicious tour of Slovenian cuisine. Welcome to Slovenia! In this video, I will talk about the Slovenian cuisine and I will take you on a food tour of Slovenia so you can see all the delicious food you can try here. Now, first things first, the quality of produce here is really good and really high and I was really surprised that a lot of places actually do prefer to use local ingredients which is great. They also have a product that is that comes as the European um, rules of designation. It's a Cornelian sausage and this is what it looks like. This is the only protected thing when, which comes from Slovenia. If you don't know what that means, so the product can only be called a certain thing if it comes from a region or a place. The biggest example of this is champagne. So they have the Cornelian sausage and they have quite a lot of other things in different regions. So the Slovenian cuisine sort of developed in different parts and because it's quite mountainous in the north, so different pockets of the country grew up sort of independently. So the food can be quite different from one region to the other. They are really good with desserts and my god they have a lot of those so this this is like the good full package without wasting more time let's start Let's talk about breakfast. Now there are plenty of options and there are beautiful bistros which offer new age brunches. I don't really know actually much in terms of the local food, but you could have that or you could have this, a beautiful floating breakfast right with Triglav Mountain in the Slovenian Alps. What else do you want, right? This is just magical, seriously. Life doesn't get better than this. <laughs> The quality and variety of breakfast in Slovenia is incredible. Pretty much everywhere I stayed, I had great breakfast. A special shout out to the Art Hotel in Piran. If you're more into brunches like I am, there's plenty of options for that available too. When you come to the south and the coastal areas, the food is quite different. It's a lot of Italian influence, which means you also get to try a lot of delicious pasta. So let's try this one that I got. It is really nice with mushrooms. Mm. No wonder Italian is the best comfort food, right? One thing I would like to say is, and this is more like a plea, not a preaching thing. Um, we are fast draining our oceans and I know it's kind of hard to resist when there's so much seafood around but please do your part don't eat fish and seafood and protect our oceans and these beautiful creatures the decision obviously lies with you like I said it's not a preaching thing just a plea how could I ever forget pizza there are some great options around I have another little specialty and it is a lamb stew with these dumplings. Oh my God, let's give it a try. The, when the lid opened, honestly, I was like, whoa. 
I was already excited. The thing that stands out is the meat is really well done. And well seasoned. Let's try the dumpling. I actually don't know what's inside, so. I actually don't know what it is. <laughs> All right, let's get the thumbs up. And it's especially nice with lemonade, so don't forget to order some. They always make them fresh here, especially around the lake. If you're in a rush or want to eat out on the way, or, you know, just don't want a heavy breakfast, we have Burek and this one is with spinach and this makes the perfect on-the-go breakfast now this is quite big and it's only like one euro or something from the bakery which is pretty great so I'm quite happy with this because I just didn't want to sit you know for a big huge breakfast so Slovenian cuisine is very specific because it's a mishmash of all the different influences from the region. So when you're next to the coast, it looks Mediterranean, Italian, with specific types of pasta, which are local to Slovenia. As you move further away to the northeast, you start to get more Austrian influences of things like uh, roast meats, strudels, uh, Eintopfe, which are you know single pot stews, and since we're in Ljubljana and we're surrounded by mountains and forests, this is quite an emblematic dish. So what you have here is really a sort of forest collection of venison filet in a blueberry red wine sauce with wild mushroom and a very, very typical side dish, which is pretty much only found in Slovenia and the northwesternmost part of Croatia called Štrukli. Strukli is a savory uh, boiled or steamed strudel that you would typically have with like your Sunday roast uh, and strong meaty sauces. So it's a prime example of this Austrian influence type of cuisine that you find in uh, the eastern part and northern part of Slovenia. What I have over here is a veal roast so uh, veal roasts, pork roasts, um, you know, chick roast chicken is a quintessential part of uh, a Slovenian weekend and specifically Sunday lunch. It starts off with soup, typically either uh, beef broth, consomme, or some type of uh, vegetable or mushroom soup, especially in season. Now we could also expect asparagus soup. And, uh, it's really, it's not a Sunday lunch unless it has soup, roast meat, some type of potato, and uh, of course, some type of uh, traditional dessert. So this potato that you, I have here on my plate is actually a very specific style that you really only kind of find in, uh, I would say, Northwestern Slovenia, sort of like from this area more to the north and more to the east. Uh, because it's not quite puree and it's hard cooked potatoes which are then pan fried with onions and that is a uh, yeah it's a very specific and quite traditional side dish for your uh, typical Slovenian Sunday lunch of course accompanied by a glass of local wine if you are into wine Slovenia has some amazing options for you there are more than 20 regions in this tiny country and do you know how I know it's good? Because they consume more than 90% of their own wine. Patrick got me really excited about the lunch and my expectations went through the roof, which sadly weren't met. Because although traditional, the venison was quite hard and blueberry and wine, I don't know if it went together so well. And Strukli was also quite bland. So I got to try a traditional dish, but this wasn't my favorite. I really enjoyed the mushroom soup though, and they make it within the bread, which was my favorite part.
being a neighbor of Italy, it is no surprise that Slovenia has their own version of pasta. And this is what it looks like. Also, you might think that truffles are a delicacy. They are not in Slovenia. So let's dig in and check out this. It is also with the Slovenian cheese, so. Oh my God, this is amazing. I'm not joking, this actually is the nicest thing I've eaten so far in Slovenia. It's called Istrian Fuji or Fuji. You have to try this. It's like winter warm just melting in your mouth. Definitely sold. Don't miss this. Another great thing for Slovenia is that you can try a lot of great Balkan food. I still remember it and it was amazing. So here's some Ivar, which is like a paste made with uh, peppers, sausages, amazing hot bread with a lot of meat, of course, and there's some beans and some peppers. So it makes for a perfect big lunch after a lot of walking around. This hot bread is my favorite and you can always add more chili. Don't hold yourself back. It is great. I live for warm bread. When you talk about food in Slovenia, I know fine dining is not the first thing that comes to your mind, but that's a huge missed opportunity because they do it really well here. They have a lot of Michelin star restaurants, which are really great. And I mean, they do it at a much lower price tag compared to their neighbors. Something that would cost me like upwards of 90, 150, even upwards of 200 euros. You'd get the same thing here for like 25, 30 euros. How amazing is that? And it's really great that they actually believe in locally sourced ingredients, mainly because their ingredients are really good. The quality of produce is amazingly high. So let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, I am in Piranska Soline, and this one shop is really special in Piran. Why? Desiree will tell you right here. It is all related to salt, you know, the really important thing in food. Let's go over and talk to her. So welcome in the shop of Piranska Soline, where, uh, where we have salt from the Piranska Soline, where we still produce salt from the tradition of 700 years. So we have cooking salt, we have fleur de sel, this uh, special salt what we use just for salad, tomatoes and fruit already cooked. Then we have chocolate with salt and then a lot of cosmetic products. We have a lot of celebrity chefs who buy our salt and use it in the kitchen because uh, the fleur de sel, it's a very unique salt, uh, what you use just in the end for sprinkling on the food, so the food has a better and stronger taste. And that was Desiree being very modest. It actually is the best salt in the world. I read it online and a lot of people vouch for it. But this is what I'm here for, the chocolate, the dark chocolate with Fleur de Sel. And how do I know it's good? Because I've already eaten one bar. You just have to take my word for it. Come on, it's, it's amazing. Lake Bled has a specialty as well, and it's called the cream cake. And it's everywhere, so I'm gonna give it a try. You know what makes it extra special? That's you. There's pastries, cakes, and a lot of other desserts. Whether you are more into the Italian style desserts or you want more of the Austrian style cakes and pastries, we have everything here. I'm standing outside the main cathedral of Ljubljana and this is a square where magic happens on Friday throughout the summer. Some of the best restaurants in the country come and basically serve, set up their stalls and serve food more street style at a discount. If you are a fan of food like me, do subscribe to my channel and I'll get to show you some interesting food from around the world. So it's a great chance to get to know the food in Slovenia. Sadly, I missed it by one day. If only I knew I would have moved my flight, definitely. Yeah, this is all I get to see. Yeah, don't miss it on a Friday. Did you enjoy eating around Slovenia with me? I really hope you did. Needless to say, there's a lot more I could have tried and eaten, and sadly, I just come with one stomach, so there's only so much I could have eaten. I really enjoyed that floating breakfast, especially. 
you have any suggestions for other people who want to try that, please do leave it in comments. And I'm gonna go finish my food, which has just arrived. So, see you later.